Hey everyone, I'm Rachel and I got hamsters and I'm here to tell you how they're doing and update you with my weekly update, what's going on with my current hamster journey. So today I wanna to talk to you about something that I got for Christmas, actually two things that I got for Christmas and how I'm trying to integrate it into my hamster cages. And if you have hamsters, you probably know that hamsters don't love change in their homes. So it's kind of a process if I want to add something new in there, I have to be kind of modular about it and, you know, replace one thing with another thing that's like similar size. So for Christmas, uh, I got two of these very beautiful Night Angel multi-chamber hides. This one is the six room chamber hide. And I don't, I know there's a bunch of different sizes, so I'm gonna link this exact one below. So in case you guys want to check it out, if you're interested, then you can find it there. It is pretty roomy, but I would say this is probably a good size for a door for a robo, but I don't know that it's quite big enough for a Syrian, especially if you have a bigger Syrian. So definitely make sure you get the bigger size if you are a Syrian hamster caretaker. One thing that's cool is the lid comes totally off. In case it is their main nest, it's kind of nice that you can just lift the lid to do a little spot cleaning without having to lift all of this part <laughs> because right now my hamsters have these wine boxes that I cut holes in. I have a video of that which I will link below in case you're interested. They all have those as their main multi-chamber hides and when I want to clean their nest, it's kind of a thing. Overall, I think the product looks really nice. Like it came with um, a little piece of sandpaper in case I wanted to sand down any edges but I really think you know, it's not like perfectly smooth. There's some texture to it, which is good. I want to incorporate more wooden products into my hamster cages to help with nails, but it's not so much texture that I'm worried about it being irritating or causing splinters. So I was thinking that I was gonna give these to both Steven and Sophia because, because they're robos, they don't get as much outside of their cage time. And because of that, I feel like I need to work a little harder to make sure that their cages are as good as possible and stimulating and interesting to them. I also like the idea that basically this maximizes the space in their cage by giving them not only this space, but also the flat space on top where I can put additional hides or points of interest for them. So I am pretty excited about that idea as well. And just to be clear, I don't take my robos out of their cage very frequently because they seem not to like it. So if you have a robo that likes being out of their cage, then you should do that. But I made a play bin for both, for both of them. And um, Sophia does like going in it, but she definitely reaches the maximum of how long she wants to be in there. It's very clear at first she's having fun and she's digging and running around. And then after maybe like, five to 10 minutes, she starts running around and you can tell she's looking up and she's waving her hands and digging at the, trying to climb up something. And that's when I reach a little cup in and she's ready to go home. So I do try to provide her with that experience when it seems like she is wanting it, but it is usually kind of short in duration and it's sort of limited to that right now. I'm trying to come up with other activities I can do with her outside of her cage that she would feel safe with but she's so fast, I'm pretty nervous. I wanna make sure that it's like really, really safe and that I'm not gonna lose her in a crevice somewhere. <laughs> and with Steven, he is so crazy fast and he's also very anxious when he goes outside of the cage. So uh, I, I have tried bringing him into the digging bin and I wanna keep doing that in order to make him a little bit more used to being out of his cage for a few minutes at a time in case we need to bring him to the vet, et cetera. But, so far, he mostly just likes to stay in his cozy little home. So for those reasons, I was gonna give this to my robos. And one of the problems that I run into is they already have multi-chamber hides, like I said, that I made for them from the wine boxes. So I don't wanna take those away because that's kind of like their main, their main situation. So what I was thinking is I wanted to get a big tray to put under this and then I can fill the tray with sand and put this on top and this can be like a, a big sort of interesting thing inside of a sand bath area for them, which I thought they might enjoy since they do enjoy being in their sand bath, particularly if there are fun hides and interesting things to do in it. I bought this thing. It looks very nice. I tried to find a big 
uh, Pyrex dish, actually went even to Goodwill, but um, this is a pretty large hide and it was hard to find a Pyrex dish that was quite big enough. I think there is one, but then it has really like wide handles on it and I just felt like, I wasn't even sure if it would fit in the 200 quart bin cage because it's just like too much going on. So here it is. It's this very big baking dish. And it's two inches high because I wanted to keep it not super deep because my robots do have a little trouble sometimes climbing up heights. But look at how beautiful it is. This is so nice. But what I like about it is it doesn't feel super heavy. It looks nice and this fits perfectly inside. Plus there's a little bit of space around the edges so, so I can push this back and then they can come out and still have some, some wiggle room right in there, which my robots really like these spaces between things. So I think they'll actually really enjoy that small amount of space there. All right, so I'm gonna try to figure out how to get this in their cages and I will film that and show you. Um, stay tuned. Hey guys, okay, so it's the next day and now I've been thinking about the whole configuration of Sophia's cage. I don't wanna mess with it too much, but I do wanna make one kind of big update. <laughs> when I first got Sophia, I gave her this thing and I had stuck it like halfway in her bedding and uh, just to kind of help her get started burrowing. And then I had another box that she then went into and that was her main house. Um, this was one of those things that I like bought at a pet store when I first got a hamster. I think that I bought this for Steven actually, but I never really used it with him. He was always kind of freaked out by the tread. I think he wouldn't go in it. So, <laughs> so I ended up using it on Sophia. And um, you know, it's like one of those things, I had it, so I used it and it was just available and it said it was for hamsters, but you know, once I did research and found out more, this is really not like an ideal hamster product. Most recently, maybe up to, maybe about two weeks ago, I took this out. I had put it fully submerged in her fluff and then up against the wall so that she could kind of burrow in here and I was hoping that I would be able to see her burrowing, um, but she caught on to that and she quickly filled it with, <laughs> with bedding so that we couldn't see it. <laughs> Sly little girl. But last time I did kind of a quick spot clean plus where, you know, I kind of move the bedding over and I sweep up the poops. Um, I took this out to wash it because I noticed that it had accumulated a lot of little poops and probably other things. So I brought it out and I realized that she had been chewing the edge here, which really horrified me. I never, she, I don't think she used to chew it. This is kind of a new thing. So I immediately, you know, took it out of her cage. I did not give it back to her. But as a result, her burrow area is a little less, um, it just has less going on. You know, like she's not a big burrower to begin with. And I think if there's no structure for her whatsoever, then sometimes she burrows and sometimes she doesn't. And I, I think I kind of have to maintain some sort of like, some sort of structure to encourage her to keep going deep, right? So <laughs> that's my little rhyme. So I took this out and now I actually use it for playtime for the dwarf hamsters. And it's wonderful because it's enormous and we could do all these shapes with it. Um, I did look it up and it says that this plastic is non-toxic, so um, I hope that she didn't eat it, but if she did, she hasn't shown any sign of illness, so I think we're, we're in the clear. But just something to think about if you guys buy one of these. Um, I feel like probably a lot of people have these because it's like one of those items at every local pet shop and they say, oh, it's safe. And when you don't know anything, you're like, oh, okay. So, Here's what I was thinking. I do need to replace her structure in her burrow area. And I also need to give her just generally more bedding because ever since I took this out, it's sort of collapsed and now it looks a little bit, a little bit sparse. So I wanna build up her area and give her structure. So I have this box. I believe one of my night angel, I think the cupcake hide maybe came in this. And uh, so it's an interior box. It was not an exterior box. I know that there's some talk lately about uh, chemicals being sprayed on boxes right now because of COVID and wanting to disinfect everything. So in case you haven't heard that, I've seen this on Instagram. I haven't seen any proof of this, 
but I have heard that, that people are saying, oh, don't use any boxes like post-COVID in your hamster cages. So I think probably an interior box is okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm just gonna take a little box cutter here and cut, um, cut some holes. So there's one side without a hole, and then the bottom. Eh, maybe I'll just put a hole on all the sides. There we go. So all the sides, except for the bottom, which I'll just put down here on the bottom of her enclosure. And I will fill this with fluffy stuff, and then probably put fluffy on top of it. And by fluffy stuff, I mean paper bedding. So I'll probably put more paper bedding on top of this so she gets Quite a bit. I mean, this has to be at least one, two, three, four, five. This is like probably seven inches high. So it'll be a good depth. And I find my robos do not burrow super deep. I'm finding with the dwarf hamsters, they really like to burrow. My robos, like, I'm hoping this will maybe encourage her to explore a little more. We will see. You'll notice that Sophia does wake up and she willingly went in that little pink cup. So I brought her over to her digging bin where I had hid some seeds for her so she could be entertained while I cleaned her cage. In case you're wondering why my bedding is in a little Ziploc bag, it's because I freeze all my bedding first before I put it in their cages, and I have to put it into smaller Ziploc bags in order to fit it into my freezer.
there she goes. So I have the double layer sand bath over here. I'm trying my new Night Angel multi-chamber. And then I put a little lava rock in there so she can get up. We'll see if that works, because she's such a tiny little thing. And then I kept a hide with an upper level sand bath just so that she would have another place to go potty. Um, I don't know if this is gonna throw everything off because she was pottying in her hides, which were then really easy for me to clean. So I'm hoping that she'll keep doing it up here. If she does it down below, I mean, that's fine, but it's just gonna be a little more of a pain in the butt. But if she's happy, the nice thing is it does add extra layers for her. So now she has a bottom layer and then extra things up here. I put this back. She likes this little thing. Lots of little nooks in there. And then I gave her a digging box and I connected it to this little whoop-de-doo here. She does seem to like the tubes. I might do one in her cage, but I also don't want to keep her from burrowing. So I thought that something kind of on the side would be sort of a good way to go. How do you like it, little girl? Should we turn off all the lights so you can explore? Oh, that's kind of a tall jump, huh? Let me give you a lava rock. There we go. I like to use the lava rocks as kind of like stepping stones. So I'm still observing her and watching to see how she does in this new setup. As you can see, it wasn't that big of a change, but the major change is just the digging box and the hide. So the first thing that we noticed is that she fell asleep in her tube, or got very sleepy, <laughs> and took a little nap there. She looks just so cute. And then the other funny thing, which you'll see a clip of in a second, is that she started collecting paper bedding and bringing it into the night angel hide that's over the sand bath. So I'm thinking maybe she didn't love the multi-chamber hide over a sand bath idea. <laughs> um, we'll give it some time and see how it goes. There she is, filling her mouth with paper. I'm sorry for the quality. It was kind of nighttime, so I couldn't get good lighting. But, so I'm not sure what this is about. But we'll give it some time since I don't want to make any changes now and see how and see how it goes. All right, so it's now Tuesday night and I originally set this up on Saturday night. So it's now been about three days and I just wanted to take a peek and see how it is she's using the new setup. So here's the strawberry hide. It looks like she is still using that as a potty. That's good. I'm gonna check the glass jar next. And it looks like that one is not being used. Although I know she has been going in there to hang out, so that's okay. But 
Good to know. Oh, you were in there. Hi, pretty girl. Hi. Can we take a peek? Is that okay? I'm gonna give you a treat so you don't know. There we go. There we go. Okay, so she's gonna be busy doing that for a second. So we can just take a quick peek and see how things are looking. Wow, look at all of that. She really filled this with fluff. Oh my gosh. And it looks like she might be using that corner as her potty. So I might need to clean that up. And there she is stirring seeds. Oh my goodness, see little girl, look at how much work you did. She really likes this, which is great. And I'm very glad that she's using this as her main hide, it seems. But it might mean that I need to take the sand out of the bottom because it's gonna be just really difficult for me to keep her potty clean. I can't even get in here with this thing. It's way too big. Well, in case I had any doubt what that back corner was, she then came and showed me that it truly was where she liked to go potty. <laughs> and then she showed me around the rest of the house. So she has her foyer, and this is her formal dining room here. And then there's this bigger room, and this is her kitchen slash living room. This is really where she hangs out. And then off to the side, she's got a really nice little cozy well, first she wanted to show me her wide pantry. She does have a lot of storage space there. And then, oh, and there is her cozy little bedroom. And look at how perfectly she fits in it. So cute, perfect. So <laughs> she clearly loves this thing and I'm very glad that she does. And I don't wanna cause any more change right now for her because it is a little bit traumatic for her to do this. So I think I'm just gonna leave it be and I'll use a plastic spoon to get into that back corner and just keep that clean for her. And then pretty soon I would then like to rotate this so it is facing the other way and then I can put a big sand bath kind of in front of it. And the only reason I'm thinking to do that is just to encourage her to start using the potty in one of the sand bath hides again, because that is a lot easier for me to clean without having to disturb her nest, which I know she would prefer if I stayed out of there, but unfortunately I'm gonna have to kind of go in there to keep that clean for her. Anyway, well, I hope you enjoyed today's episode and I hope it's helpful for you thinking through what kind of multi-chamber hide maybe is good for your hamster and how you might arrange it in your cage. I don't know that I would call this a success or a failure. It's just an experience and I'm learning about Sophia and what she likes. If you are interested in any of the products I mentioned today, I'll list links to everything down below so you can check them out. And as always, thank you so much for watching. And if you have any feedback or thoughts, if you have a Night Angel multi-chamber hide, I'd love to hear how you use it and how your hamster uses it. See you next week.